African Origin of Buddhism and the Civilization of India. Where did Buddhism originate? Many people claim that Buddhism originated in India. The question is, did Buddhism originate in India or did it originate someplace else? This is a legitimate question because most of the history of blacks in Asia is a mystery. It is a mystery because most researchers claim that ancient Indian history is the history of the Indo-Aryan people. In African Origin of Buddhism and Civilization of India, we answer this question by discussing the role of blacks in South Asia. The reason we are looking for the origin of Buddhism is because the most ancient images of the Buddha depict the Negro or black African male with curly or peppercorn hair. The Egyptologist Anta Diop was sure that Buddhism originated in Africa because many of the concepts associated with Buddhism are found in Egyptian canonical literature, especially the concept of Mat. Mat is the Egyptian spirit of justice and the personification of truth and the cosmic order. In African origin of Buddhism and the civilization of India, we discuss the African origin of the rise of civilization in India, beginning with the Indus Valley or Harappan civilization and the megalithic civilizations of South India. This book explains that numerous African groups early migrated from Africa into Central and South Asia, India. The archaeological and historical evidence discussed in this book will make it clear that Africans from the Nile Valley have been in intimate contact with the people of India for the past 5,000 years. This contact is made clear by the migration of Dravidian-speaking Tamil from the Nile Valley into India. In this book, I explain the role of blacks from Africa in the rise of civilization in India. You will discover that the Kushites from the Nile Valley played an important role in the rise of civilization in South Asia. Special mention will be discussion of the Exumite origin of the Naga, who founded kingdoms in South India and Southeast Asia. The archaeological and historical evidence discussed in this book will make it clear that Africans from the Nile Valley have been in intimate contact with the people of India for the past 5,000 years. This contact is made clear by the migration of Dravidian-speaking Tamil from the Nile Valley into India thousands of years ago. In the African origin of Buddhism and the civilization of India, I explained that the Jimna Sophists were Buddhists and that these scholars spread Buddhism in Egypt and the Meroitic civilization. This is made clear by, the, by Heliodorus's book, The Ethiopian. The Ethiopian is a love story set in Kush. It indicates that Buddhism was popular in the Meroitic Empire. The Ethiopian is a love story about Theogenes and Shar Clea. It makes it clear that the Gymnosophists were very important in Kushite society and that Buddhism was a popular philosophy or way of life. In summary, African origin of Buddhism and the civilization of India will finally explain where Buddhism originated and the Vedic literature that pinpoint its place of origin. Right now, let's look at a film about Buddhism in Maryland and Egypt. Enjoy. Buddhism in ancient Egypt and the Maryland Nubia. Archaeological and textual evidence support the presence of East Indians and Buddhists in Egypt and the Merodic Sudan. At this time, Buddhism wrote their religious texts in Tocharian, and they used the Kharosthi script. Philostratus, in the life of Apollonius of Tyana, makes it clear that the Gymnosophists lived in Upper Egypt and the Merodic Empire. The Gymnosophists were Buddhists. 
The Indian scholars living in the Upper Egypt and Meroitic Sudan introduced the Tocharian language and Karasi script to the Meroites. My decipherment of Meroitic is based on the Kushana theory. The Kushana theory is that a group of Buddhist scholars, the Gymnosophists, introduced Tocharian and the Karasi script to the Meroites. This language and script became the foundation of the Meroitic writing system. Philostratus, in the life of Apollonius of Tyana, makes it clear that the Gymnosophists lived in Upper Egypt and the Merotic Empire. There were Gymnosophist communities in Upper Egypt and the Merotic Sudan. We can therefore say that the Gymnosophists were Meroti nationals. The Gymnosophists probably used Socharian and the Karasi script to write their scriptures since they were Buddhists. This makes it clear that Socharian and Karasi were important means of communication for this Meroti population. Tocharian was therefore probably a major language spoken in the Meroitic Sudan. The historical evidence makes it clear that there were probably two migrations of Buddhist Genopsis to Egypt and the Meroitic Empire. The first migration probably dates during the Persian period. The second was during the rule of Asoka, who was a supporter of Buddhism. Zacharias P. Thundi in Buddha and Christ makes it clear that the Edicts of Ahsoka, circa 274 to 236 BC, indicate that he sent missionaries to Egypt to preach the Buddhist Dharma. Ahsoka is the grandson of Shapagupta, the founder of the Mauryad dynasty. Ahsoka became king in 268 BC and died around 233 BC. Ahsoka is known for a series of rock and pillar inscriptions which were scattered around India and many parts of Afghanistan. These inscriptions or pillars were meant to propagate Buddhism. The inscriptions of Ahsoka were written on boulders, pillars, and cave walls. Ahsoka made the lion a symbol for many of the pillars he erected to celebrate Buddhism. These pillars include the Ahsokan edict at Sanchi and the Sarnath Lions of Ahsoka. The Sarnath Lions of Ahsoka commemorates the preaching of Lord Buddha. It features four lions, an elephant, a Dharma wheel, and a bell-shaped lotus. The elephant is a representative of Queen Maya's conception of Buddha when she saw the white elephant during his birth. Thundi maintains that archaeological evidence exists for a community of Indian sages living in Memphis as early as 200 B.C. Flinders Petrie, in 1908, found archaeological evidence of Buddhist colonists, which he claimed dated back to the Persian period of Egypt. In relation to a mural he discovered at Memphis, he wrote, On the right side of the top is the Thebian Mongolian, below the Aryan woman of the Punjab and at the base a seated figure in Indian attitude with a scarf over the left shoulder. These are the first remains of Indians known on the Mediterranean. Here there too have been no material evidence for that connection, which is stated to have existed both by embassies from Egypt and Syria to India, and by the great Buddhist mission sent by Ahsoka as far west as Greece and Serene. We seem now to have touched the Indian colony in Memphis, and we may have hope for more light on that connection with seems to have been momentous for Western thought. If Flanders Petri's dating is correct, this puts Buddhism in Egypt 200 years before Ahsoka sent Buddhist missionaries to Egypt and Syria. We know that descendants of these missionaries were still in Egypt over 200 years later because they were visited by Apollonius of Tyana. Ahsoka used Karathi to write his edicts. The Buddhists also use this writing system to record their scriptures. This means that the Gymnosophists would have had a long tradition of employing Karathi to communicate their ideas in the Merodic Empire. The Gymnosophists were probably well respected by the Merodis, and some Merodis probably had knowledge of and practiced Buddhist teachings and literacy. Merodis played an important role in Buddhism because Blaime, 
a prominent group in Maryland, Sudan, I mentioned in Pali texts. Pali texts are those texts that were written by Buddhists. Some of the Pali texts in which Brahmi is mentioned is the Tipitaka. And in the Tipitaka, Dr. Derrick, in an important article that, repeat, that appeared some time ago, noted that in the Tipitaka, we have a blind me, an African, and front ranks of Buddhist texts of very respectable age. The Buddhist texts where blind me were mentioned are very old. The Venanaya Pitaka is dated to the 4th century before Christ. If Lamaya are mentioned in Buddhist texts, we can be sure that Marodis were not ignorant of Kairosti, since Lamaya were nationals in the Marodic Empire. This is what explains why many of the Marodic symbols agree with Karasti. The Zocharian language was written in Karasti's script. This script was used to write the Gandharian Buddhist text. According to Glass, the Karathi script appears fully developed in the Asokan inscriptions of Shabaz Gahi and Mansekra. These inscriptions these inscriptions date back to the 3rd century BC. It continued to be used in Gandhara, Kushan, and Sogdian. Glass provides evidence that Karasti writing dates back to the first Brahmi inscriptions of India. The fact the writing was used in India by Ahsoka to produce rock edicts demonstrates that Karasti was in use long before the introduction of Merodic script to Kush. Moreover, given Flinders Petrie's evidence that Buddhist missionaries were settled in Egypt during the Persian period, the edicts of Ahsoka, these missionaries would have used Karasti to write their literature. Wellesby in the Kingdom of Kush notes that only four of the Merodic letters resemble the equivalent Egyptian demotic signs. But more than four Merodic symbols match Karasti, the writing system of the Buddhists. Uh, Alban, in an article published in the Merodic newsletter, noted that did a comparison of Merodic and Karasti and discovered that 34 out of the 42 signs, or 81% of the Karathi and Merodic signs, matched. By itself, find that Merodic is written in Tocharian would be an important discovery. The fact that Meroti was written in Karasti is quite interesting because most Tocharian texts are written in Karasti. Both occurrences offer additional support to the Tocharian origin of Merodic writing given the analogy between the signs and presence of a sizable gymnosophist Buddhist The Merodic Tocharian signs agreed because some Merodis were probably already literate in Karasti due to the influence of Buddhism in the Merodic Empire. There seems to have been a third migration of Buddhists to the Merodic Empire many years after Ahsoka sent missionaries to Egypt. These migrants came to the Merodic Empire after their king was murdered. The principal group in Central Asia that practiced Buddhism and used Karathi were the Kushana people. The Kushana wrote their literature in Tocharian. Flavius Philostratus, the author of the Vita Apollonii, claimed that the gymnosophists of Mero originally came from India. Given the fact that the Kushana had, far, had formerly ruled India, around the time that the Merodic writing was introduced to the Kushite civilization, led to the hypothesis that some of the ancestors of the Gymnosophists may have been Kushana philosophers. The historical evidence of the Kushana having ruled India made the classical references to the Indians, the Gymnosophists, and Mero an important source for the construction of alternative theories about the possible location of the cognate language of Merodic outside Africa. I theorize that due to the claims of the classical writers that some of the Merodis came from India, that these Indians probably introduced the Merodic writing system. There is external evidence which supports my theory for a third migration of Gymnosophists, Buddhists to Mero, of Kushana origin. According to the life of Apollonius, the Indian Gymnosophists Merotis were formerly led by a King Ganges, who had repulsed the Scythians who invaded this land, India, 
from across the Caucasus. Philostratus also made it clear that the Indians of Miro came to this country after their king was killed. The presence of this tradition of an Indian king of the Indian Merotes conquering the Scythians predicts that the Indian literature re should record this historical episode. This prediction is supported by a Jaina text called the Kalakale Hakya Kathanaka, which reports that when the Scythians invaded Malwa, the king of Malwa, called Vikramaditya, defeated the Scythians. This king, Vikramaditya, may be the Ganges mission mentioned in the life of Apollonius. Confirmation of the Ganges story supports the clerical literature evidence that there were Indira Indianized Merodes who had helped spread the Zocharian trade language to the Merodes. Let's look at this whole idea of Buddhists in the Merodic Sudan. The epidemic lion temple of Naga has much Buddhist symbolism. It is here at Naga epidemic temple that we probably find that Buddhism was worshipped by many Merodis. The front of the epidemic temple has Queen Amanatori on the right and King Natakamani on the left. The rear view of the epidemic temple has epidemic between Queen Amanatori and King Natakatami. On this relief, epidemic has three heads and four human hands. This figure corresponds to the three-headed figures associated with the Buddhist reliefs and the uh, various edicts sent out by King Ahsoka. The three-headed epidemic compare favorably to the Ahsoka edicts. Some of the Ahsoka edicts include lion figures, like the lions of Sarnath. The Ahsoka lions in Buddhism are associated with regality, strength, and power. On the side of the Naga Abedimak Temple, we see Abedimak leading some Meroti gods before Nata Kamani. Along the side of the Abedimak Temple in Naga, we see at the front entrance an interesting figure of epidemic in the form of the serpent. This epidemic figure is coming out of the lotus in the form of a serpent with arms. Epidemic has a lion head and human arms and hands. The epidemic Naga temple is the best preserved epidemic temple. The epidemic temple has usually one or two rooms. In Buddhism, the lotus is very important. The lotus represents purification of the mind, spirit, and body. The open blossom signifies full enlightenment. Among the Merodis, there are other symbols that show the worship of Buddhism in the Merodic Empire, including elephants, footprints, and the swastika. The, the swastika is seen on the funerary stilla of Mataye. In Buddhism, the swastika represents good luck. It also symbolizes the footprints of Buddha. The elephant in Buddhism is a symbol of strength of the mind. It also represents nodal gentleness and denotes one on the path of spirituality. Footprints are found at many Merodic religious sites and throughout the Merodic Empire, like the footprints of Kas Kasra Ibram. In Buddhism, footprints symbolize the physical presence of the enlightened one. The inscribed footprints of pilgrimage found in mer many Merodic sites may relate to pilgrimage by Merodi Buddhists. In addition to the classical mention of the Indians settling Upper Egypt and Nubia and Ahsoka's edict sending missionaries to Egypt, we also have a hoard of Kushana coins that were found on the floor of a cave at the present monastery shrine at Deborah Demo in modern Ethiopia in 1941. This suggests that Tocharian cords were in distribution in many parts of Africa during the Merodic period. There were other Indians in Egypt in addition to Gymnosophis, Buddhist communities in Upper Egypt and Nubia. For example, at Kassir el Qadim, there was a large Indian-speaking community. The Indians were in Egypt writing messages in their own language around the time we see a switch from Egyptian hieroglyphics to the Merodic writing system. All of this supports the tradition of the Merodis 
that speak of a Kushana Indian philosopher among the Merodes passed on to us by Philostratus. In conclusion, there is textual and archaeological evidence acknowledging the presence of Buddhists in Upper Egypt and Nubia in ancient times. Evidence for the presence of Buddhists include one, the archaeological evidence found in Memphis by Petri, two, the modern the mention of Blimea in Buddhist texts, three, the Edicts of Ahsoka, four, the evidence of classical references to an Indian king who conquered the Scythians is supported by Indian literature, five, the existence of a large community of Genosophists, Buddhists in Upper Egypt and Nubia, and finally, the high incidence of Buddhist symbolism at the epidemic temple at Naga provides external collaboration that Buddhists indeed formerly lived in sub-Saharan Africa. The presence of Indian traders, philosophers, and settlers in Mero and Upper Egypt makes it almost impossible to deny the possibility that Indian Buddhists, similar to those in India, familiar with the Tokarian trade language, did not introduce this writing to the Merodis who needed a neutral language to unified the first ethnic groups who made up the Merodic state after many Egyptians left Egypt due to its takeover by the Romans. In relation to the history of linguistic change and bilingualism, it is a mistake to believe that full linguistic transfer had to take place for the Merodis to have used Sotarian for purposes of communication. When it did not take place when the Merodis wrote in Egyptian hieroglyphics for hundreds of years. What is clear from the textual and archaeological evidence is that the Buddhists who wrote in Karasti had a long history in Nubia and Upper Egypt.